Hey guys, Wondering Kid here. WK Space Agency is open for business again. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a couple of tools I just recently downloaded. Kerbal Alarm Clock and Kerbal Engineer Redux. Uh, for those of you who are already familiar with these, uh, down below here somewhere on the screen you should see an annotation. If you click on it, we'll jump ahead to where we start playing again. For those of you who are unfamiliar, let me show you around. Kerbal Alarm Clock, the first thing we're going to play with, is a neat little tool. Now, you don't see a lot of different options here when you're sitting inside the uh, space agency. And you'll see me using this more often as we go. The f big thing here that we're going to care about is I'm going to add in a couple of alarms. And these are for transfer windows to different planets. Now, to do this, you set your transfer planet to the sun or whatever planet you're on. For example, if I'm on Kerbin, I can set transfer windows to from moon to Minmus, Minmus to moon, things like that. From the sun, I can go from Kerbin to the full list of different planets. The first thing I want to do is I want to throw in an alarm from my Kerbin to Duna transfer window. Now up here, you can tell it what you're going to be doing. I'm going to have it kill warp and send me a message from my transfer window, just in case I've got things sitting in orbit. Also, when you hit this drop down, you'll see the time to transfer is for the first one that's open for you. You notice Duna is 185 days out uh, from where I'm at at this point on day 41. Jewel is only 144 days. I don't see another transfer window for Jewel for a while. At the same time, I don't, I'm not really prepped up yet for what I want for a bounce around in the Jewel system. And I wanna make sure I have the contract before I bother shipping anybody out. Now there are other tools on the web that you can use to try and gauge your windows, what kind of Delta V's you're going to need, things like that. This is just a simple reminder that I want to know when these are here. The other transfer window I want to keep aware of is Duna back to Kerbin, which actually happens in front of that. So. Never mind. Cancel that one. So we've got our Kerbin Aduna item. Uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock also lets you put up alarms for things like when you're about to run into a maneuver node and stuff like that. So if you've got your warp going at maximum speed, it'll slow you down and let you know. We'll also do it for things like changes in SLI and things like that. You'll see me using this um, throughout our time here in uh, the Space Agency. Now the next thing I want to introduce you to is Kerr, uh, Kerbal Engineer Redux, which is this. Now it doesn't do much until I've got some stuff on the board, and suddenly I've got all sorts of things going on here on the screen. Down here on the bottom left, it'll tell you the delta v of the vessel, how much, the exact weight, your thrust to weight ratio, how many parts, things like that. Up here, and well, let me show you. Slap on a fuel tank and an engine. And you can tell it's going to tell me my delta V for that stage. Now, as you add more stages, it'll show you the delta V, things like that. Over here, this is the delta V for stage and the delta V for the entire vessel up to that stage. So you'll just see these numbers add up. And it'll give you your um, expected burn times at maximum. And the other thing you're really interested in here is your thrust to weight ratio. So this is a very handy tool. So instead of having to hand calculate all of those Delta V calculations I've been doing for you guys and walking you through, you don't have to. You just drop Kerr in here and you can read what you need. Now it's got some settings, play with them, get used to them, you, um, decide what, how you want it to look. I tend to shrink the GUI down a little bit here. I'll expand it again if you guys need it. The other option you have is set it to compact so you can just see your stages, TWR and Delta V. That's usually all you care about. The rest of this is kind of whatever. Cost is nice to know. So that's the tools. Uh, let's get to the game. Uh, first thing we're going to do, I've got 450K up here. And I'm looking at a uh, Minmus uh, drive-by. And what fun is going to Mimus if you can't get out? Time to upgrade the Astronaut Center. 
Now, one, the next Extronaut Complex upgrade just gives me unlimited Kerbals, so not really a big deal to upgrade that again. I don't usually need more than four or five, but we'll see if anything else happens along the way. Our next major upgrade is the million we need for R&D. I'm not really too worried about that yet. So, contracts time. Oh, yeah. I agree. All right, Gene, what you got for me today? So, I've gone through the contracts, and although I've got some decent surveys nearby, I've run out of contract room to really be able to do a bunch of things at once. The satellite contracts pay me much better, so I've picked up a bunch of those. So what we're going to do, if you'll notice, I've also got a satellite and a tundra orbit around Minmus and explore Minmus. That's where we're going. I agree, Gene. This is where we're going next. We're going to go to Minmus. I'm going to bring a satellite with me so that we can drop it off when we get up there. Um, I'll probably actually use the same satellite I used to go clean up these Kerbin ones. And I'll show you some of the power of the Kerbal alarm clock here, too, showing you how we can do multiple things at once. Now, I'm not sure whether I want to upgrade this contract facility or my R&D next, believe it or not. So, uh, well, we'll get there. So what we're going to do... Don't need that. So, let's check out Kerr. So what we're looking at doing is, is we're going to build a Minmus lander. Simple enough. Um, there we go. No. Um, where'd my pod go? Oh, jeez, it's already all the way up there. Come here. Now, uh, let's build our lander out. Now, this is a trick I learned from Katateyoshi uh, when he was doing a couple of things and was also working on an 18 ton or less lander for Moon. And this is a neat little trick. We're going to offset this engine and we're going to kind of stick it up in there a little bit. It's just kind of peeking out. And we shouldn't need lander legs now. So, save us some energy. And now we just need to put some utility stuff on it. Now you'll notice we got a TWR of 0.87 and a Delta V of 2.276 right now, just for this little lander. That's gonna change. Now, uh, let's go with three solar panels. Now remember, these are massless. This is that. I don't feel like fighting with it, so I'm gonna add in a small ladder. Hey, look at that. Uh, we need a parachute for when we come home. Ah, that changed our Delta V. A little bit of weight there. Other than that, we've pretty much got our lander. This is going to be what we dropped the Minmus on. Now we need to get it airborne. So, nothing special here. We're going to slap our decoupler on the bottom. Look how nice and flush that is. Isn't that pretty? And now we slap some gas on it. Now, I can go up to 140 tons now, but still only at 30 parts because I haven't upgraded the VAB. Now, for rockets, I don't usually need more parts. Planes, I'd really like some more parts. I don't care about the tonnage. That, that. And if we slap a, well, slap a T-45 on the bottom. So now, if you'll notice, we have our two stages. Our top stage is 2130. Our bottom stage is estimating at 3604. Definitely not enough to get us to orbit. Let's get our engines figured out there. There we go. I'll clear that out. So we're definitely going to need a bit more boost on this. that. Now check this out. We put two on. We can tell that our TWR starts off at 1.48, maxes off at 2.18. If we bring the thrust down, it'll tell us exactly what our TWR and delta V's change to. 
I'm gonna use a tri lifter. If I can line myself up here. Eh, close enough. So now I start at 1.31, I end at 2.2. That's actually pretty solid. I'll hook you into there. Now this only gets me 48.30 in Delta V. That's kind of tight, but it shouldn't be too bad. So. The Minmas Visitor is prepped for launch. Come on, enter, thank you. I almost saved that off for giggles in case I want it later. Simple, easy. Now, one thing to notice, this is a 24.1 ton rocket. You will not build this without upgrading the uh, launch pad. And let me just double check something before I leave here. Do I want to up this any? Now let's bring that up to a 1.5 thrust, thrust to weight. There. You'll also notice it improved our Delta V sim. All right. Save, launch. Here we go. And we're off to Minmus. Yeehaw! Now, something else about Kerr you guys should probably want to see. Why is it not coming up? Where are my data displays? Hmm. That's very curious. I'll have to go look into that. You should. I should have a bunch of displays up. Uh, as to my height over ground and things like that, time to apo, a whole bunch of different things. Well, I'll go look into why that's malfunctioning here. It may not be fully set up, or it may have something to do with the difficulty settings. I'm not sure offhand. Uh, we don't need car alarm clock up right now. So, off to orbit. So, Kerbal Engineer actually now includes and has embraced a bit of the career path. And to see Kerr in flight, they've embraced the concept of bringing engineers with you on flights or a chip. So if you want to turn it off so that you're not uh, forced to bring an engineer with you, come in here, switch over activation mode to partless and that's your easy, easy fix. The chip, is here. So you can either slap slap on your computer flight units onto your ship, which should take care of the problem for you, or not. So we're not doing this with Kerr, we're gonna do this by eyeball. Hey, that's always fun. Now without being actually able to see Minmus, it's tough to gauge uh, Minmus rise. If you were gonna try and eyeball this on your own. Now, one of the things I didn't do, which can save you a little DV, is try to launch when you're crossing this and aim a little uh, south or a little north to adjust your inclination. At eight degrees, I'm not too worried about it. So, if, uh, if Minmus Rise is about there, here I want my maneuver node roughly about there. Actually, set his target. So our sending node and descending node comes through roughly about here. So we're going to adjust that. Going that way, I want to go a bit. As I said, you could have saved yourself some DV by launching in the correct direction at the correct time of day. You'll notice this is 150 DV. It's not a small amount. Okay, I'm going to accept point one as acceptable. That's 243 DV I could have saved had I done this correctly. 
Now my other option would be to shoot out to, all the way out there, get my APO way out there, adjust out there, and then try and chase Minmus around. No. Now, here's a neat trick about Kerbal Alarm Clock. We're going to add in a new alarm, and you'll see I've got a whole lot more options while I'm flying. I've got maneuver nodes, which is what I'm going to add here. Uh, just kill the warp. I don't need a message. We'll add that alarm. So, watch this. If I go max speed here, and I don't hit any other buttons in a moment, it's killing my warp for me as I come in. You can delete the alarm. Now one of the things you can do is you can adjust how far out you want it to be depending on your burn times, things like that. I'll shut up the alarm clock for a second. I'm going to get myself spun around a target. All right, we're going to burn a little early here because we're going to run out of fuel, I think. I was only doing a half thrust burn. Yep, just shy. Let's go trigger our stage. Okay, close enough for government work. Now, next step is to figure out where to burn. So, uh, figure it'll be right about here. Zoom out some so I can see what's going on. Look at all those lovely satellite nodes. And burn. Oh, that's a little heavy. Okay, I've got myself some Minmus encounters out there. Let's calm down our burn levels. All right, what's my PE looking like? 135, 790, or, eh, 154 will work. So we'll get ourselves, whoa, a little hyper, oh, you're very hyperactive. Okay, there we go. And... It's a one point one minute five second burn, so we'll start one minute five seconds out. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you get a message. You can delete it on close. We'll do a half throttle burn through it. Now, uh, one of the things you can do is when you add those alarms, it'll allow you to switch to the target vessel, which is what I'm probably going to do while I'm screwing around with these satellites, because uh, I'll launch a satellite delivery system next, and I'll set an alarm here for when I do an SOI change. So let's get through this burn, and we'll figure it out from there. Okay, so we've got our burn, and we're practically blazing right past Minmus here. Yeah, we're definitely coming through at a decent rate of speed. It has almost no um, catch. Now, one of the problems here with Minmus is, is you don't want to get too close. I've accidentally crashed into Minmus because the conics have lied to me, basically. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another maneuver node, a little bit out from the planet. I'm going to see if I can't bring my periapsis down to something a little closer at least. Uh, 6,000 is a little tight. I'll try and keep it up about 10, 12. Oh, not the, damn it. Try that again. There, that'll work. So with a little normal adjustment and a little radial adjustments, I'm able to get myself into a decent orbit for the plane. And I'll be coming in at about 21k. I kept 
picking up the uh, satellite area opposite, so I'll have to be careful of that when I get in close. So now we're going to add in a new alarm. We'll set it for that maneuver node. It's a very short burn. Set it for 15 seconds. Let's kill the warp. All right, now we wait. All right, so you get the guys get the idea of the alarm clock. Yeah, just got to get ourselves lined up and get our burn in, and I'll set one for the SOI. Just like maneuver nodes, there's one for when you change SOI. There we go. And that's our expected orbit. So now, SOI change is already lined up. I'll set it for when we actually change SOIs. I want it to kill warp, kill warp and message. Actually, I want it to pause again. No, no, just kill the warp and message. All right. So in six days, the visitor will get to the Minmus SOI and we can start playing with it. Hit backspace to unfocus from the planet. Let me make sure we've got him rotated so that he's getting juice. I don't want to end up shadowed by accident again like I did last time. And that's it. We're going to let him sit for a while. I'm going to go launch some satellites. So I know some of you like to watch my uh, designs for rockets, and I don't blame you. I like watching other people too. So what I'm doing here is, is I'm just trying to build a, for lack of a better term, a basic satellite launcher so that I'm going to save off and just stick in the background and launch whenever I need to do satellites. Uh, so you're aware I've stuck the KER computer flight unit on this thing. It's got four solar panels, et cetera, et cetera. This top deck has 3,600 3, delta V. This alone can lift it for 4,500. Here's your, where you're looking as a problem. Look at this TWR, it's horrible. And that's part of the issue, is the TWR being completely miserable. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to give it a little help. Now you've seen me do this before. This isn't anything new for you guys. But what we're going to do is we're going to adjust how we're using this. First, I'm going to bring the engine down a bit. Now, you'll notice uh, my staging up here gets a little more awkward. I've got this stage here, and then these stages down here. So it's telling me at stage 2, I should have 3939. Stage 1 gets me 1605. Now what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this TWR via these thrust limiters about 1.6. There. So that'll give us 2100 this way. That gives us plenty of delta V to hit orbit and start our escape trajectories and whatnot. Uh, I've also put an advanced inline stabilizer onto this. Now, I'm just over the 18 ton limit with this. No big deal as far as I'm concerned at this point in the career, but just something to keep in mind. So I'll save that off so I can load it up later. And this is what I'm gonna to use to launch my satellites. Okay, now let's save some Delta V. You'll notice one of the orbits I need to do is this giant polar orbit up here. Now, if I launch do polar, and actually I'm almost lined up for it pretty well here. So I'm going to launch due north from where I'm at to match the rotation. So instead of going east, we're going to go north. Bring throttle up to maximum, and let's go. Now here was the engineer items I wanted to show you. 
You'll notice you can turn on different buttons, da 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 da. Your vessel button will show you your remaining delta V in each stage, things of that nature. Your total, your thrust to weight at the time, things like that. Your intake air as well, which is important for uh, SSTOs and things like that. Our orbital information uh, basically tells us our APO and PERI information. Uh, inclination, eccentricity if you need it. And surface, this is what, the other thing that comes handy. It shows us your terrain altitude rather than your mean sea level altitude. Uh, let's stitch those. Which are also a series of handy things, including your impact time, where you're going to land, and when you're actually on a landing trajectory, it'll tell you your suicide burn speeds. Up here on the top, you'll notice we have Apo height, time two, Perry height, time two. And over here, it's kind of buried underneath our buttons because of the size of my screen, but terrain altitude, vertical speed, horizontal. And you can shut those off with your head buttons. I'm shutting off HUD too because I can't see the blanket thing. Whoops, my Apo hype is more than enough. Now, now that I've got this up, I don't need this as much. What we're going to do is we're going to turn on our orbit information. Nope, oh, sorry. One of these buttons, there we go, altitude. No, it's not an exact, but it's close enough. And we are not going north. I'm going to need to correct this a bit. All right, now we just get ourselves into orbit and start chasing satellite drops. Remember, I've got a six day alarm already up here, so I won't miss my MinMus transfer. Well, what you just saw there was me screwing up and letting my uh, guy run out of juice. So I wasn't able to hold the correct trajectory. Whoops. I got to get both into orbit and I might as well expand out my orbit anyway. Okay, that gets rid of that section. Okay, let's see how we're lined up. All right, and I'm just gonna fast forward through the rest of these. We're just gonna hit all our different points. So, after screwing around with these satellites for a little bit and just trying to get my orbit straightened out and not blow through 1500 delta V, just trying to do a simple course correction. I believe I have hit about the time the Minmus visitor should be coming into Minmus. My next course correction for this satellite is in three days. So we're going to leave that one alone. Um, it's three days and an hour. So that gives me roughly an hour or 45 minutes to go screw around with the Minmus Visitor. Ah, Minmus Visitor. Well, I'll wait for this to get into position. And that's a pretty short burn, so we should be able to snap back and forth between the two pretty easily. So, let me show you how this looks for a swap to ship. So you can see, I get my SOI change alarm. I can delete on close and I can jump to the ship. I have 52 minutes worth of flight time before I care. So we're gonna close this alarm. Here's our Minmus visitor. So per periapsis is looking at 21K. So next step, we're gonna put in a maneuver node there. Let's get ourselves into orbit. I 
I mean, you don't want to go below 5k on Minmus. 6k is a safe amount. Oops, that's a little low. It's 42. Eh, we'll, re we'll do another correction burn once we get there. Is this going to cost me 167 in Delta V? No big deal. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I forgot how nimble this thing was. Eh, shut that back off. Eh. One of the abilities they should have over here is chase your maneuver node. And that will occur in two hours from now. So we're going to switch back to our satellite. This is how you deal with the easiest way to deal with anyway. Uh, when you get a flotilla out and you've got ships going in four different directions trying to do four different things at once. We're going to be really heavily relying on stuff like this for when we start doing uh, transfers over at Jewel or even things like that, just so we don't lose track of some of our ships. We'll add a maneuver node in here. Uh, don't know the estimated burn time. Give me five minutes ahead of that. So the Mimus visitor is out. So, we're coming to orbit on Minmus. We're at 13 and 28. Just clean this up a bit. Six and 14, yes, that'll work. Oh no, 13, 14, there we go. That's a burn shortly. Tell my satellites got a lot of time before I do my next burn for it. So we'll be playing around here on Minmus for a bit. I'll come in. Hello, Minmus. How are you? So let's get ourselves a crew report and transmit it. And next... Once we get this fixed up, I'll go for a landing. Now, what I want to do is, is I want to come in and skim for my landing. It means I want to come in at about 6K, roughly. So we'll come over here to the APO. We'll lower the periapsis down a bit. Seven, six point three. That'll work fine. Now the next thing you can do is you can actually create uh, two maneuver nodes. Let's see straight over there. What I'll do is I'll figure out my landing setup. There, and I'll perfect that in a little bit once I get around to it. So next up, perio fix, or periapsis fix, and we'll go from there. Well, let's start looking for a good place to land directly underneath us. Mm, that little mountain ridge right there looks decent. Won't take much to slow us down up here. So once it starts looking reasonable, yeah, let's see what happens. There we go. And we'll just watch for our touchdown. Oh, 
and we have reached Minmus. I'll ship home a crew report. And look at this. I have EVA buttons. Let's play. We come on, jump for me. Now that's height. All right, now most likely we've got a contract for uh, drop a flag on Minmus, so we'll go look at that. We have successfully explored Minmus. Got ourselves a nice piece of change for that. Grab him on here, maybe. <laughs> Come on, grab the ladder. There you go. Pop him in. Oh, we're going to go hit the Space Center for a second. Okay, it doesn't look like I can plant a flag on Minmus until I plant a flag on the moon. So maybe I'll go take care of that. But we're here. We've completed the Minmus. Uh, science data from space around Minmus. This is an easy one to get. As we take off, we'll just grab an EVA. And it looks like I'm going to have to drop somebody on the moon to go do this. It keeps coming back up. Mm. Yeah, I can't seem to trigger Minmus. All I can do is trigger Moon. So it looks like I'm going to have to put a flag on Moon before I can put a flag on Minmus. Well, that's fun. The first flag is supposed to be able to be put down as soon as you get there. It's after you've done the first flag mission that you're not supposed to be able to do them once you've got, if you've got a Kerbal sitting on the surface. But we've reached Minmus. I've got a satellite that's still traveling around dealing with things. What I may do is I may send somebody to Moon, go deal with this flag plant mm -hmm. and then we can do the flag flag plant on minmus and get our guy home so uh well we'll take a look at doing that here eventually so uh teaser for the next episode as you can see i've got a couple of different items going on here um i've got seven contracts going in particular interest I've got an active. We're going to do some visual surveys on Minmus. This is basically a rover mission. They're all EVA reports on the ground. We're going to plant a flag on Moon. We're going to perform temperature scans on the Moon. Uh, the ship we send up to go plant the flag, we're going to make sure it has some thermostats attached to it. I've still got a couple of my Kerbin satellites going. Uh, we're going to get some science data from space around Minmus. Um, I've got this Duna satellite waiting to go uh, for when we do the transfer. I'm going to start loading up on Duna missions. And still have to do the Minmus. So, next episode, I'm going to be doing survey missions on two different uh, on Moon and on Minmus. And hopefully we'll be able to plant a flag on the Moon, too. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.